Hi, and welcome to a three-step vehicle detection framework for range estimation using a single camera. So in 1885, Carl Benz created the first automobile. A year later, during public testing, he crashed into a wall, believe it or not. So since then, we've been trying to work around the most unreliable part of the car, which is the human driver. So we've added seat belts, we've added airbags, we made the car stronger, and until recently, we've implemented smart features such as driver assistance and autonomous driving cars. So if you look at existing technologies and what we have at the moment, we have Audi's adaptive cruise control, Mercedes-Benz with the F015, Volvo with the autopilot and Google Car. Now the problem with all these technologies is that there's just too many sensors. I mean, Google Car relies just on a fusion of six to eight sensors for autonomous driving. Now, I'm not saying that this is a bad thing. I mean, what if you could do the same what humans can do? I mean, humans rely solely on our vision and sometimes our hearing for driving. What would the possibilities be? Well, if you look at a camera-only sensor system, right? The pros are the cameras are really inexpensive. There's less hardware complexity fewer hardware components. However, the drawbacks are that computer vision is not just not anywhere near as good enough to obtain the reliability necessary for safe driving. They must deal with lighting variations and illumination at night. And also computer vision takes a great toll on processing power. Now, let's take the first step to camera-only systems. How do we do this? Well, how do humans do it? Well, first of all, we detect the vehicle in front of us, and then we unconsciously verify that it is a vehicle. And then we track that vehicle over time, even during occlusion. So we can apply the same three-step recipe or three-step framework to vehicle detection. So the first step is hypothesis generation, where targets that may be vehicles are identified within an image. Hypothesis verification, where potential vehicles are classified and non-vehicles are eliminated. Then there's algorithm optimization. Hypothesis generation and verification steps are improved through optimization techniques such as tracking of the relevant vehicles. So what is nice about this framework is that it's fully customizable. You can put any detection algorithm, any verification algorithm, and any optimization algorithm. It all depends on how they gel together and how well they work and the performance of the algorithm. So first, let's take a look at what algorithm we use for vision-based adaptive cruise control. So we first get the camera image in, we normalize the brightness. So by normalizing the brightness, what happens is that we basically compensate for the brightness variations in our image, which may be due to the time of day or from different environments or from brightness changes in different driving environments. And then we move on to template matching, template or pattern matching. So what happens in template or pattern matching? We basically take our input image and we match it against a small database of templates. In this case, we use around 20 to 30 templates. And this can be done using normalized cross-correlation. Once we've performed hypothesis generation, we can then move on to the hypothesis verification stage. Now we use lane detection for this. Now what we do is we create a lane region of interest. And by doing this, we basically, whatever vehicles or candidates are not within this region of interest, we can then eliminate them. So the reason for this is that we're focusing on long, longitudinal control and we're focusing on the vehicle within our lane only. And then we move on to a decision tree. Now, what a decision tree is, is basically a set of rules that our candidate match must adhere to. So obviously the vehicle cannot appear in the top corners or region of the image and the vehicle cannot move or jump from frame to frame from one position to the other. It must abide by the laws of motion from the camera's perspective. From there we do adaptive image cropping. So how image, adaptive image cropping works is that we crop the image to the, the size of the bounding box of, of our vehicle. Now, the reason for doing this is that we dramatically speed up the performance of our algorithm because basically less pixels for pattern matching results in quicker processing of our image. From there, we do tracking. Now, we can either use a, a two-dimensional common filter or we can store the image coordinates or bounding box for about 5 to 10 consecutive frames. If we happen to not detect any vehicle within those frames, 
we can then declare that the vehicle track has been lost. Okay, so if we move on to online learning. So what happens in online learning is we take our cropped image and we take the cropped image of our verified vehicle and we add it to our template database. Now in doing so, we basically matching our input image to the most recent image of our vehicle. This results in a much more robust matching and it becomes more, much more reliable. So that's our detection algorithm. So now if we move on to range estimation, how do we do range estimation? So now we use perspective and geometry cues to estimate the range of the lead vehicle. Now some people, they use the width of the lane in an image, which is inversely proportional to the longitudinal distance to the point between those lanes. We can use the width of the vehicle or the, the height of the vehicle, but what if the vehicle is too narrow or too tall or what if there's very variations in that? There's no consistency in that. There's more consistency in the lanes. Okay, so the accuracy of this mostly depends on the accuracy of the lane detection algorithm as well as the width of the lanes. And then from there, we use a discrete Kalman filter, which is used to uh, attenuate the jitter that we obtain in our range signal and also to track the lead vehicle's longitudinal position. Now, if you want to convert that lane width pixels into range in meters, what is the relationship? So we can basically use the camera pinhole model, where this is, our, this is the object that we're detecting, which is the lane width, that this is the lane width, x1 is the lane width that is projected onto our camera CCD. D is the long, longitudinal distance that we're looking for, and F is the focal length of our camera. So let me play a little video for you. So this is a, the algorithm that we created. So what happens is that our vehicle is detected over there. So we have one without tracking and one that uses the common filter for tracking. So as you can see, there's a lot more jitter in the signal that it doesn't have any tracking. And the common filter does quite well and moves according to how we expect it to. And then over here, we have our online learning algorithm working in the background. You can see it's matching the most recent images to our vehicle in front of us. Okay, so how do we test the system? Well, we basically need an experimental setup and a, a bunch of metrics. So first, we need to identify the different driving conditions that we need to test it under. Because obviously, with perception sensors, it will be subjected to different conditions. So we can test it under shadows, lighting conditions, road curvature, traffic density, and headway distances. Now, the purpose of this was to attempt to determine what of each factor plays a difference or plays a role on the detector's performance. We could not isolate the conditions due to the experiments taking place in uncontrolled conditions. So that's, that's the reason for this. So based on that, we created 16 datasets with three standard datasets, which totals over 23,000 frames. Over here in table one, you can see the composition of those datasets. And then we have a set of detection metrics. Now, these detection metrics were created by Siva Raman et al. And all these metrics and equations can be found in my conference paper. So we have true positive rate, which is the measure of recall and localization. False detection rate, which is the measure of precision and localization. And then we have average false positive per frame, average true positive per frame, false positive per frame, which of each of them, they can either measure scalability, localization, and robustness. Okay, if you look at the results. So from vehicle detection, our let's look at our accuracy results. Our true positive rate is quite high, so our, our true metrics are quite high, relatively high. Our false metrics are okay, in this region are okay-ish. Over here, they're not so great. They're relatively high. So if you look at the highlights, we have a high true positive rate, which means we're detecting our vehicle fairly well. The drawbacks is that the average false positives are relatively high, which means that we detecting ghost cars or cars that are not supposed to be there. Uh, looking at our average detection rates, we, to summarize, we basically get high detection rates when we have low traffic, straight roads, and overhead sun. We get low detection rates when there's heavy traffic, curved roads, heavy clay, and shadows. Looking at our range estimation results, we get really good results. So we get errors of lower than 0.2 meters. And this is assuming neg negligible error in our vehicle and lane detection algorithm. And this is for a range of 0 to 100 meters. 
If you look at our car mount filter, uh, this is significantly smooths out the jitter in our Vision Base signal. As you can see from here, we have our ground truth. So this is the actual range. And then we have our detected range, which is quite jittery. And then we see our uh, common fault range, which is, which is the red line. Okay, so in conclusion, monocular vision-based range uh, finding systems are feasible for adaptive cruise control systems. Pattern matching is reasonable for hypothesis generation. However, it does not work as well as in all driving scenarios. But the nature of these scenarios make them troublesome for most vision-based detection methods. The emphasis, uh, we also talked about the the three-stage, the three-step vehicle detection framework. And if you combine this with a suitable range detection algorithm, can be effective for a variety of underlying algorithms. So if you look at the future, uh, we can, the future work can improve on multiple areas of the project. As with any such system, increased performance of computing platform or the nature of the algorithms would allow for more robust performance. So before we finish off this presentation, let, let me leave you with a quote by Henry Ford. There are no big problems. There are just a lot of little problems. So this basically means that before we can accomplish our goal of a camera-only system, we can we just, just need to take the first step and solve all the little problems before we solve the bigger problem. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.